Oh my god, hey! Welcome back to my kingdom of stagey isolation. If you're seeing my face for the first time, my name is Mickey Joe, and I am obsessed with all things theatre. If you already knew that and just didn't recognise me, I'm blonde now. It's a thing. It won't last. Don't get used to it. That's not because I don't like it, my hair just grows quickly. So as theatres around the country begin to reopen, as well as shows in the West End, much of the UK's touring circuit is now slowly beginning to regenerate as well, as more of the UK's regional theatres are once again reopening their doors to full capacity audiences. One of the first tours to reignite performances was the Rocky Horror Show, a staple of the UK touring circuit for decades now. I have seen the show four times going back to 2013. I am obsessed with this production. I love going back to it because it's a really unique theatrical experience and just a great night out. I think I go to Rocky Horror for the same reason that other people my age go clubbing. I think I get that same thrill out of it. The tour reopened in the middle of July at the Southampton Mayflower before traveling to the Marlowe Theatre in Canterbury and is visiting various venues around the UK as well as playing a small run at London's Peacock Theatre in November, I think, of this year. Now, if you've only ever seen the movie and you've never seen the show live on stage before, you may not realize what a unique theatrical experience this show is. And while it's not quite as wild as a lot of the more modern, truly immersive theatre experiences and things like Secret Cinema, it's still quite different from a lot of the touring shows you might be used to going to see. As a veteran audience member of the show, today I'm going to be telling you the five things that you should prepare before you go and see the Rocky Horror Show on stage, in order for you to have the most positive theatrical experience. You're welcome. So the first thing that you should prepare before you go and see the Rocky Horror Show on stage is a costume. Now while it is not mandatory, one of the most fun parts of going to see the Rocky Horror Show live on stage is getting to dress up in the style of the show or as one of the characters. You will notice a huge chunk of the audience do this, die-hard fans of the show, they will have costumes ready and they will be dragging them out of their closets to go and see the Rocky Horror Show again. You get a lot of people in generic sort of corsets and fishnets, a lot of people dressed as magenta in like a maid's outfit, and a lot of frankenfurters. The one I think I see the most is the laboratory frankenfurter with the green sort of scientist tied back overalls and the pink gloves. And I tip my hat to all of the guys who come dressed as Frankenfurter because it is an elaborate look. It's really fun to be part of that audience where everyone's dressed crazy and they give you a lot of support for it and they really cheer. There were so many people who have said to me that they liked my costume at Rocky Horror before. The first time I ever dressed up to go to Rocky Horror, I dressed as like generic Transylvanian party guest with a slight homage to Christopher Biggins from the film, or what they would call phantoms in the stage show. The second time I went on a whim and I can drag anything out of my wardrobe and throw a Brad Majors together because that's, that's just how I dress, let's be real. This time around I wanted to do something slightly more creative and I figured, well, I'm blonde right now and I'm not often blonde, so I kind of had to do Rocky. If you've seen the show or the film, Rocky does not wear much. So after briefly considering wearing a very faithful adaptation of that character's costume, I thought, mm, better not. Because I was like, you know, you're going to a theatre in Canterbury. Like, the cathedral is right there. So I came up with a costume that was definitely inspired by the style of the character and clearly representative of that character while being slightly more theatre appropriate. Basically I got a pair of gold swimming trunks from ASOS and a gold shirt from some website on a Google search. The shirt when it arrived, even though I ordered an extra extra small from China, was actually a little bit big so I just did a stitch on the inside seams to make it tighter and fit me properly. I did the same thing with the sleeves just so that it would really fit. Then I went out and bought some just cheap white shoes and some gold spray paint. Spray painted them gold so that it would match. I uh, took some black shoelaces off of another pair of shoes and voila, we have Rocky Horror shoes. And while it definitely wasn't the most out there outfit at the evening, I liked the creativity that I had put into trying to come up with something that wasn't just an exact replica of a film costume or a stage show costume, even though I definitely got harassed by a bunch of frankenfurters for, and I quote, wearing too many clothes. But this was a pretty easy costume to throw together, and I really liked the overall look when it came out. Let me know what your thoughts were of my Rocky Horror cosplay down in the comments section. Also, for the record, just because this may not have had a bunch of nudity on show, it's still not necessarily something you want to be wearing when you're having Nando's for half an hour before the show in Canterbury. That was, that was an experience. 
So once you have your Rocky Horror outfit and you are ready to go and see the show, step two is learning how to time warp. This is indisputably the biggest, the most famous song from the show. You've heard it at a primary school disco, you've heard it in the film, you've heard it at a wedding reception, I'm sure. A popular dance floor classic right up there with Hey Macarena and the other one that's not Hey Macarena but wants to be. What's the Saturday night and I like the Saturday night. It's Saturday night. Saturday night and the sit day. I've gone off topic. You need to know how to time warp, because when the time warp happens in this show more than once, the whole audience usually will get to their feet and time warp along with the cast. Or if they don't do it the first time the time warp happens, by the time that the time warp happens at the end of the show, everyone's on their feet joining in. Except for the elderly couple in front of us in the upper circle who seemed really confused about where they were. So you may think you know how to time warp, and it's not that difficult because a lot of the instructions are right there in the song. But there are some technicalities with how they do it in the show versus how it will get done, I think even in the film or on a dance floor. To the extent that so often the time warp will come on when I'm on a dance floor somewhere else and I get so cross about people getting the details of it, not wrong, but different to the stage show. And because I'm so used to that version, it just annoys me because I'm petty and stagey like that. So the first step, as it tells you in the first line, is very simply just a jump to the left. And then after they do that jump to the left, they kind of boogie on the spot for a little bit. Then it's a step to the ra ha 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 height. They do this three times and do a sort of crisscross with the hands at the same time. Then you put your hands on your hips, but you go the long way around to put your hands on your hips after you've said the line. You take the whole musical gap to do that. And then you bring your knees in tight, but you wait right until the end to do that. So it's you bring your knees in tight. Now, then it's a pelvic thrust. This is, this is what this is and you're welcome for this footage. That really drives you in, say, yeah, 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 yeah. And hips go in a circle, and hands by the head. I always go the wrong way round in this bit, so I spend the whole show being like, oh, are we, which way are we orbiting? Not my best move. Then for let's do the time warp again. Hands go up and then down onto the hips, and then you sort of shimmy down and back up. Uh, the cast actually step it a little bit forwards and back when they do it, which is why I do it that way as well. But you get the general gist. Doesn't hurt to practice your time warps before you go and see the show, just to make sure we're all on the same page. It's important we all look great as an audience. Step three of preparing to go and see Rocky Horror in the theatre is actually to learn your lines as an audience. Big shock! When you go see Rocky Horror in the theatre, there are a lot of audience call-outs that the audience get to do and sort of heckling the show, but it's very much built into the script of the show. If the audience didn't do this, the show would be about half an hour shorter. Most of them happen when the narrator is on stage and they're mostly little heckles to things that he says. And again, they're very practiced. There are set lines that the audience say and that everyone who is a regular fan of the show just seems to know. And the narrator expects these. So we'll normally have a quip or a comeback prepared or there's an actual back and forth that happens. An example would be that he starts the show by saying, I would like, if I may, and then the audience shouts out, you may! There's also very colourful names that they shout after he introduces Brad and Janet for the first time. At one point in the second act, Janet says, Where am I? And the audience shouts, You're in a play! Some of these are really pivotal to the plot. There's a moment where Riff Raff says, Wait here, and then walks off stage. Brad and Janet start to walk away, and then the audience shouts, He says, Wait there! And they sort of look up sheepishly, and then slowly move back to where they were standing. I always wonder what would happen if no one is there to shout this one out, and so I suspect that maybe there is a front of house stage manager plant somewhere who is delivering the really necessary heckles. There's some other really funny ones that happen at some performances, and there's a lot of opportunities to try new ones as well. If you're a seasoned fan of the show and you want to try some new heckles, there are definitely some places where you could put them in. I think a good rule with the heckling is to pick your moments and never really try it during song or when music is happening, because there's not the ability for the cast to sort of pause, expect it, and parry back and forth because they're bound by what's happening in the music. When I first saw the show, I had no idea how everyone else just seemed to know these. And now that I've seen it enough times, I either know them all as they're coming or someone will do it and I'll go, oh yeah, that's the one that they say at that point. I'm not sure how these evolved, but I find it fascinating the way that this knowledge is just retained. And it goes to show because no one has seen the show in a decent amount of time because there's been a pandemic. So it's really interesting that this stays in so many people's heads as fans of the show. Now it used to be that you just had to learn these at performances, but now there has been a filmed version of the show that I'm pretty sure is on YouTube. And so you can go and watch the filmed version of the stage show and listen to all of the audience call outs and you can learn a decent amount of them from there.
The fourth thing you must prepare before you go and see the Rocky Horror Show. There are some props that you may like to bring with you. There's a few moments of the show where, again, the really involved members of the audience, the diehard fans, have some props they will get out. In one of the early songs, there's a light over at the Frankenstein place. People have all sorts of light-up implements, glow sticks, colourful light-up toy things that they sort of get out, light up, and wave around during the chorus. It's cool to sit in one of the circles when that happens, or rear stalls because you can see all of these lights in front of you. It's just a really cool effect in the theatre. Some people use their phones as well, but that's quite bright, a phone torch, and so you don't want to be too distracting to the audience members around you. I say that, it's Rocky Horror, and what else can they expect? Also, I'd never noticed this before, but in that number, some of the audience members had brought newspapers and put them over their heads because that's what Janet is doing on stage at that point. There's also a moment in the show at the end of Act 1 where you can throw confetti because there is a wedding happening on stage. Some people threw toilet roll in the second act of the show, and I'm not sure which part of the script motivated that, but they clearly pre-planned it because they were sat on the front row of the dress circle and just lobbed it into the stalls. You start to understand why audience fights are not uncommon at performances of the Rocky Horror show. Finally, step five of the things you must do to prepare before you go and see the Rocky Horror Show in the theatre is just to have fun. It's just a fun, riotous night out at the theatre, and the more you just welcome it all on board, the more fun you will have. The Rocky Horror fans are, in my experience, one of the most welcoming groups of people. Everyone is so supportive of each other, looking crazy and just participating in this crazy nonsense because they love the show so much. Everyone's there to have a good time. The more you just get involved with it, the better time you are likely to have. And those are my five tips on how to prepare before you go and see the Rocky Horror Show on tour at the theatre. Or in London, because it is going to be doing a stint in London's West End. If you have any more questions about the show, let me know in the comments section down below. I will do my best to answer them. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to subscribe to my channel for plenty more content about all of your favourite shows. And if you would like to support me as a stagey content creator, as well as getting access to exclusive photo and video content, head over to patreon.com forward slash Theatre. I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. For ten more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey, thanks for watching, have a stagey day. Subscribe! <laughs>